What's up YouTube? Josh here. Welcome to the first video in this tutorial series where I, the bootcamp grad, teach you the way that I wished I'd learned it when I was at Code Bootcamp. So the structure of these videos are going to be section one, what it is and why we use it, and then the things you'll need. Section two is, this is how we use it, and section three, these are some more resources that you can check out to learn more if you want, and uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section below. I don't want to keep this too long, let's jump right into the HTML. So let's talk about HTML for a minute. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It was invented by this guy named Tim Berners-Lee in 1980, and it was meant for kind of static web pages. And when I say static web pages, I mean web pages like the ones you saw in 2002. For an example, you can go to Sean Connery's website, and it's super out of date, it doesn't adapt to the screen, there's nothing moving on this, very static, and there's not a lot going on. HTML in general is just a set of containers. It's like a Russian nesting doll, containers within containers within containers. For example, we have Google Chrome open. You can right click, go to inspect. We'll pop open this little window, make sure you're on the elements tab. And uh, if you expand out these little triangles, you can mouse over and you can see everything in this page that you're looking at. Generally, it's common practice to have a wrapping container, and then you have another container inside of that, and another container inside of that, and it's all nested inside this line here. Now, the shortcut to get this open, so you don't have to right-click inspect everything, at least for Windows, is Control-Shift-C. That will bring it up, but it will automatically let you inspect something. So if I close this again, Control-Shift-C, and you can start massing over things, and it will pull it up, highlight it in the inspector. So if you're wondering if this is a picture, or is this a div, or how is this made? So now there are a lot of HTML elements. These are the ones I use on a day-to-day -day basis. My favorite most garbage one. And now you have a Google marquee sliding across your page. Super useless. You could do this 5,000 other ways, but this was invented a while back when animation didn't exist. Or maybe it did. Now let's move on to making our own little web page here. And you're going to need a text editor for this, and I don't mean Notepad, I don't mean WordPad, I mean like a proper something specific for code. These are a list of code editors. They're all free. The one that I'm going to be using for this example is called Sublime Text. If you want Sublime, just Google Sublime Text. And then just click Download. Pick the one that you want, install that, and then pull that up. So. I've got Sublime pulled up here. The first thing I want to do is save it as an HTML file so that Sublime recognizes it and can help format it. So come up here, File, Save As, put it in a folder somewhere. I'm going to put mine in HTML. Um, usually the main page of a website, the HTML file is called index, so just name it index. And then save it in there. And you can see when I type a div, which is the most common element that I've seen, you type div and then you press tab and it will pop up and auto-complete the tags for you. And what I mean by Russian nesting doll is that you can type div again and you can see that they just get nested further and further. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make a container div, which is generally how most websites do it. So let's type div, let's press tab and it will complete our, our tags for us and let's press enter. And inside of this wrapper, we're going to have an image for Grandma's Cookies. This is probably, I, I could probably think of 9 million better examples after this video is finished, but right now this is all I got. And you press tab. This doesn't have an open and close. This is one of those special tags. Not all of them have this, but most of them do. So you press tab and it says SRC. That means source. It wants a source. And that means a URL from a website for a picture, or it could be the file path to a folder on your computer, like C drive and wherever, wherever that's located. But the general thing I do is come over here to Google and let's type in grandma, because we're gonna be doing grandma's cookies. Uh, I, I don't know. These are terrible pictures. <laughs> uh, maybe this one. This one, this one is good. So come up here, grab the URL and then We'll come back to Sublime, paste that in to these quotes for the source, and then let's do a header tag. A header tag is just an automatically 
bolded text that's generally pretty big. So a header tag, there's different sizes. There's an H1, H2, H3, and they go backwards. So H1 is the biggest, H4 is the smallest. So grandma's cooks. And then we'll need a list. So we're gonna need a list for the ingredients, but we need to specify that we're going to want some ingredients. And for that, we're gonna use a paragraph tag. And a paragraph tag takes up an entire block, which means it wants from left to right 100% of the page. And by default, also uh, divs also do this. And what I mean by that is if we go to google.com, I'll show you how this works. When I say it takes up 100% of the page, like a block, if you inspect it or control shift C here, we can see that this blue bar for this div takes up 100% of the page. And anything else that you put underneath it will go on a new line. But if you have it nested, kind of like how we're making it now, so we have a div and then stuff inside of it, it will be inside of this container. But uh, by default, a div takes up 100%. And if you put something below it, not inside of it, it will go automatically below it on the website for, from, from top to bottom. And the same thing will happen with the P tag. And then we're going to need um, uh, a list of items. So first we have to establish if we want an unordered list or we want an ordered list. And I think for this, we don't really need an order of ingredients. We just need ingredients, but we need to know which one. So we'll do UL for unordered list. And by default, you have to put the list items inside of this. So unordered list and then press tab and press enter, space it out. And then we need the list items, the things, the things on the list. And for list items, you would probably guess that it's just LI, right? And then you put, we would need uh, some butter, probably. And then you would rinse and repeat a few of these. Seriously, defining my baking skills right now, I, I feel like I, you need more when you bake cookies, but whatever. List item, here we go, buttermilk, eggs, sugar, flour. And now this little dot again means that you haven't saved it, so control S. And now go to where you saved this file. I saved it on my desktop inside of HTML, and you can see that it's saved as index. And if we pull our Google Chrome back and we drag and drop this onto it, we have this simple, <laughs> this is the best image. We have this simple website. Okay, so let's keep going through the things that I use on a normal basis. But I would say probably 90% of web pages are built on divs, headers, p tags, um, also span tags. So a span tag is just like a paragraph tag in that it's meant for text, but a span tag is only takes up the amount of space that you give it. And the amount of space that you give it depends on what you style it as or the, the text that you put inside of it. So go back, refresh our page. These are great. And if I put another span tag, yeah, they are, and respond to myself, they'll sit next to each other. Even though they're on separate lines here, they sit next to each other because they only take up as much space as you give them. If you inspect them, you can see that this one only takes up this much space, and this one only takes up this much space. So by default, they'll sit next to each other for as long as you go. So each element by default has its own set size that you have. Um, so images will sit next to each other. If you had multiple images, they would sit next to each other as long as they fit in the space that you give it. So if I had a, another image that was super huge, it would probably drop down underneath because it doesn't fit in this little space here. So the next element that we're going to go through is the anchor tag. An anchor tag is just a link. You can link to somewhere on the page or you can link to other websites. And uh, href is just like a source, but you got to give it somewhere to go. So you do a tag and then it says, give me a source, please. And then uh, we, we have a great recipe here. So if uh, this turns out to be crap, you can go here to the Food Network one. And uh, so copy that URL, paste that into the href here, and we'll just call it alternative <laughs> recipe. Save it. Go back to our web page. God, picture is so awesome. Refresh. Alternative recipe. You can see this also sits in line just like the span tags. Another super common um, HTML tag here is a, a button. Obviously, you need buttons to click on. Buttons are everywhere. I don't need to explain this any further. But what you can do is 
put this tag inside of a button so when you click the button instead of just text it takes you somewhere so if I save this I go back and I refresh it now it's inside of a button the more you do this the more you learn how they how they sit and which elements take up the entire space and which elements don't and you can change this you can change how these elements come by default by using CSS but we're doing that in the next video I think we'll probably just keep building off of grandma's cookies and one of the other elements here is called a input and there's different types of inputs inputs are similar to buttons in that they're almost ex exactly the same and you can give you can give it some certain properties now every element well a lot of elements in HTML come with properties by default so this has a type submit and there's different options you can put in here if you want to find out exactly all of them you could just google input input element attributes because these are technically called attributes on the element now I could keep going with tags on tags on tags on tags there are certain tags that are meant for like formatting so for example there's a form tag and then inside of this you would use elements and it will know that it's supposed to be used for like a contact form or a sign up form or something like that just like there's an article tag which is meant for formatting things into articles and uh, just commit these to memory commit the shift control C to memory so that you can inspect the page and see what it looks like you can see that our page over here is a lot simpler so we have our container div which is highlighted in blue which holds everything and then if you expand that out if you want some more resources um, I would suggest checking out html5up.com these are pre-made websites now this does contain some CSS and JavaScript but you could uh, if you really if you were interested you could use these HTML5 up elements to basically create your own personal web website and you could come in here and you could change out the data and change out the background picture just look for the image and then change the source that's that's one good reference another thing that I would check out when talking about HTML is called boilerplate so boilerplate is just a default HTML document that doesn't come with any anything inside of it so this is the most essential HTML code that there is so generally you have a doc type which specifies that it's going to be HTML and then you have HTML and then you have a header this is where you include your link tags to your styling we'll, we'll cover that in the next video you have a meta which you know, character type and then you have a title so the title basically is the tab name when you look up here so if we were to add this title if we were to take everything here and put it inside this essential essential HTML here we'll put it inside we'll put it inside the body tag and then we save it and we want to give it a title called grandma's cookies that will be the tag name done you can also add icons because I'm sure you've seen little icons like Food Network, HTML shell up there. But let's refresh the page and now we can see it's called Grandma's Cookies in the tab which is the title here. So this is the most common HTML that I use and we'll pick back up here in the next video. I'll include a link to this in the description below. I'll post it on my GitHub. You can go to my GitHub and just click download. It'll give you a little zip file and you can open this up so we can be on the same page if you don't want to type this all out yourself and you just want to copy and paste from me. So, that was the tutorial. These are just some shortcuts, things I've learned from my job since I've been employed as a developer. And since this is my first video, I would like some feedback. Please leave your questions, comments, corrections, things that you'd like to see added in the next video. The next video will be CSS3. And be sure to join the Discord. I'm trying to build this into a little community. If I can learn to do this for a living, you can learn to do this. I already teach people how to do this. They, they come from no experience and then they go and then they get a job. And if, if I can do that for me and if I can do that for them, I want to do that for you. So be sure to join the Discord. Links in the description. Ask me any questions. Try to answer them the best I can. I have a Twitter. I have an Instagram. Follow me on there. I'm just a normal dude doing normal dude stuff. If you want to see the next video, be sure to hit subscribe. Click the bell so you get a notification when it's out. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.